Well, our Thursday night football game was, yet again, not a good game. But I got to say, had that game's halves been flipped, it could have been a good game. The second half was actually a 3-3 tie. We could have seen a good game had the Browns exploded later. You know, those kinds of games, there was once a 30-point game that back in 1985 where the Giants only had a seven-point lead at halftime, and the Cardinals led after the first quarter. Um, of course, the Giants exploded in the third and fourth quarter, so it wasn't a good game, but it had that potential to be a good game. And that's what you got to think about sometimes. Sometimes just have those games where, um, where a team can be in it, and then completely lose it. And this game was sort of the opposite of that. So I want to show my thoughts on the game. Why primetime games, you know, were so horrible this year in a lot of cases. And show some of the worst primetime games. And whether or not I think that it was planned or unexpected. This does not apply to nationally televised games. That get that slot. Um... You know, that could be video for another time. This is going to be um, games that were just, you know, on, on fully on prime time. So there's no way that they could change it and how bad they were. And then do a little bit of a week 17 as to which games have the most implications on the playoffs. So, first of all, when I went to bed um, last night, the Browns were, were leading 34-17 over the Jets. And at first, I thought that, number one, this could be Scorigami. And number two, this could be a game where the Browns put up 50 or even 60 against the Jets. I thought that that was possible because they had already scored 34 points in the first half. And the Jets, you know, the Jets weren't too horrible. But 34-17 is still a three-score game. Now, the Jets, um, you know, and the Browns each got a field goal at the end of the game to make the game 37-20. So, no score got me, nothing like that. It was, you know, I, I got to say there were a lot less points scored than I thought that it would be. The 20 was actually right around where I thought the Jets would end up, but I was shocked that the Browns only got 37. I thought that they would get at least in the 50s. Um, or, at, or at the very least, they'd be able to put up 40 points against the Jets, and they couldn't. This is actually the decisions video about um about a Jets, you know, and their punt. And what makes it such a bad decision is that it, it's you know it's layered. For the Jets to have gotten to that point, it's terrible coaching, terrible quarterbacks. Um, you know, they didn't have a single backup plan for Aaron Rodgers when he. Um, got injured, which was which pretty much doomed the Jets, and the defense was able to carry them on their backs through Week Eight to put them nearly into a playoff spot. Began to you know collapse, like they were collapsing under the weight because they couldn't handle uh, being the only thing keeping the Jets alive. And by Week Fifteen, they were eliminated from the playoffs, whereas the Browns could have clinched that night. And they, you know seemingly went the correct direction from their 2022 failures. Um, they've honestly become a new team after they made the playoffs in 2020, even though they missed the playoffs the last two years. They were at least able to stay in it for a while. Whereas the Jets just haven't made the playoffs since 2010 and are one of the worst teams in the NFL. So, you know, you have, you have that game going on and that was certainly you know not going to be a uh, fun game to watch but um but you know so so speaking of that prime time games this year they always have them with the intentions of getting a good game on but a lot of times they aren't actually good like the week nine uh, not week 9, week 10 Thursday night football game between the Panthers and Bears. You would think that, you know, having the number one seed go up against um, 
the number one seed go up against Justin Fields could be a good game. And I'll say this, it was competitive. So it wasn't one of those blowouts I've seen on primetime football where um, where you can just have like one team explode and it's competitive. It was competitive. There was a doubt as to whether or not the Panthers or Bears would be able to win the game. There was doubt about that. I'll give it that, I'll give it that, you know, I'm not going to try to argue with that it's a bad game because it was a blowout, it wasn't, the Bears won 16-13, but it was just a sloppy game um, that pretty much everyone knew would have no implications, both teams came into this game with seven losses, the Panthers had one win, the Bears had two wins, and honestly, kudos to the Bears for still being mathematically alive as of week 17, I highly doubt they'll be able to make it to week 18, but... Kudos to the Bears for being mathematically live in playoff contention as of week 17. Because I thought they'd be eliminated by, by week 15. But but honestly, if things go right for the Bears, as in they, they get a big win over the Falcons and a couple of the teams that are on the edge drop their games, um, might even involve a Packers um, Vikings tie for if the Bears need that to stay alive, then they're definitely done for. But honestly, the Bears have a small chance to keep their playoff hopes alive into Week 18. You know, in which case, it, it, it could set up in a, a critical game against the Packers. Now, I doubt that that's going to be the case. I really do. But the Bears have a chance to be alive in Week 18. And they are going to be alive in Week 17. They are still... Alive through the playoffs, even if the odds are less than one percent, they still have a chance. So kudos to the Bears, but that game was not good. Also, their first win on Thursday night football against the Commanders. Well, the Bears won forty to twenty. You had you had the Commanders who came into this game two and two, and the Bears who came into this game zero oh and four. And you had on on Thursday night football last year, and no one liked it. And this year, well, same result. Um, as the Bears pretty much dominated over the. Commanders. So that was a pretty bad game. Now the Giants had, you know, um, five games on prime time this year. Um, you know, five games on prime time this year, and the Giants are a horrible team. And let's just look at them. So their Sunday night football game in Week 14 against the Packers. That was actually a good game. I mean. The Packers led a drive that everyone thought would be game winning to take a 22-21 lead from being down six, uh, t 21 to 16. But then the Giants got a game winning field goal to win the game 24 to 22. So everyone thought that game, you know, could have been a, um, could have, you know, it, it really came down to the end of it. And honestly, their week. Six primetime game, I think it was week six against the Bills. That was also a pretty good game. I gotta give them that. And the reason why it's a pretty good game is because in week six, um, you know, the Giants had a 9 0 lead over the Bills. The Bills made it 14 to 9, and the Giants lost because they couldn't complete a touchdown pass as time expired. But honestly, again, the Giants were like in that game at least. But the other three, I mean, the first Sunday Night Football game of the year, the the um, the Giants got squished by the Cowboys in a 40-0 shutout. Their week three primetime game, um, was it Thursday Night Football against the 49ers? Um, was a 30-12 blowout. And against the Seahawks in week four, I think on Monday Night Football was a 24-3 blowout. And I got to say... There was high expectations for the Giants because they made the playoffs last year and they even won in the divisional round, uh, in a wild card round before losing in the divisional round for their best playoff run in over a decade. And the Giants had seemingly their most potential for a very long time. But the Giants clearly have failed to do anything similar this year. And, and they got eliminated as early as week 16. That's pretty bad. Um, that is definitely pretty bad. And honestly, the Jets week one game was a it was an overtime thriller. So even though Aaron Rodgers got injured, 
and the and the Bills took like a 16 or 3 or 13 3 lead over the Jets. The Jets were able to come back, force the game into overtime and get a game and get a game winning touchdown in OT. So the Jets honestly, you know, they did what they they honestly did a good job for uh, week for you know week one in their primetime game. And the Lions Chiefs game on the NFL kickoff was a very good game as the Lions won um, 21-20 in a game that had a lot of competitiveness. But you know, um, you know, then the, the, you, there were other games in there that were pretty bad. Like, let's look at the uh, Week 15 primetime games. So, Eagles Seahawks on Monday Night Football was actually replaced Chiefs Patriots because the NFL knew Chiefs Patriots are going to be so bad for the first time in history. They actually flexed them out, but then Patriots Broncos then got I think um, um, Sunday Night Football. Of week 16, which was an ugly game, but the Patriots stunned the Broncos, winning 26 to 23. And pretty much killing the Broncos' playoff hopes. And what I gotta say is, is that that was actually, you know, a, a good game. That was actually a good game because, um, even though it was ugly, because at least you had the competitive nature of it. And Eagle Seahawks in week 15, that, that, that was also, again, a good game, even though I hated the result of it. But then you have to analyze, like, week 14, Sunday Night Football, another Eagles loss. And this was a 33-13 to lashing by the Cowboys. And it became clear when the Eagles were down 24-6 at halftime that the Cowboys are going to win. So that's another example of a primetime game being bad. And there are just so many examples of all these various primetime games that happen. But, you know, there's, like... There's, 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 there's like stuff behind it, but you know.